with so many teachers now wanting to use data projectors and laptop computers to show various resources to their students, it's a useful thing to know how to actually set this up for yourself rather than relying on somebody else to do it for you all the time. So this video is just to explain to you the basics of how you set one of these things up. So first of all, when you open the bag, just by unzipping it like so, you should find three pieces of equipment in here. One is obviously the projector, okay? And they do come in different sizes and shapes. So there's the projector. You'll also find a power cord, because obviously the projector needs to be plugged in. So there'll be a power cord that goes into the wall and uh, an adapter. And in most cases, the adapter, if you look around the back of the machine, on this particular one, there it is there. And the power plug just plugs in like so. Okay, and the other end obviously goes into the power plug. So that's the first bit. The other cable is this one here. And this is the cable that actually carries the video signal from the computer to the projector. And this is usually just referred to as a VGA cable. VGA stands for Video Graphics Adapter. You don't need to remember that. But the VGA cable is the cable that carries the signal between the laptop and the projector. Generally speaking, the VGA connectors are blue, like this one. And if you look at the back of the, the uh, projector over here, you'll see that it's actually blue as well. So it's simply a matter of matching the colours. This plug is actually not symmetrical. You can see it's longer on one side than the other. And so you do need to just be careful when you plug it in that you plug it in the right way. It will only fit on one way. So press it on like that. There are a couple of screws on the side here where you can tighten it up. Generally, I wouldn't worry about that or maybe just one turn so it doesn't come out, but you don't need to screw it up real tight. The other common feature you'll find on most projectors is these little legs that sit at the front here. And most of the time they've got like a, a button above them, and if you click that button, the leg drops down. And you can drop that leg down to whatever height it needs to be. The idea of that, of course, is as this sits on the table, let me just readjust the camera, as this sits on the table like so, if you want to adjust the height of the projector, you simply hold those two buttons, like so, on the sides, and press them, lift the projector up so the legs drop down, and then release the buttons, and the projector stays there balanced on its legs. And that's actually the best way to get the projector aimed correctly at the board. If we were to look at the second projector, which is this little Sony model, um, you can see it's slightly different, it's a different shape, but uh, this one actually has a flap on the front, and there's a button there labelled open. If you click that, it just flips open like so. So, you know, they, they do vary, and uh, if you get to know a particular projector, maybe it's worth making sure you borrow that one whenever you need it, so you understand it. Um, however, if I flip this one around, you'll see on the side here, there is a connector there for the input, and that's the one that this blue cable that we spoke about before, it's connected onto there. And on this particular model, the power plug is right there at the front, okay? So unfortunately, different brands have the different plugs in different places, but it's the same principle. Um, they all will have a place to plug in the power. They all will have a place to plug in the VGA cable. You look on the front of it, you can see it's also got little legs at the front. There's also a little button there. Same deal, if I press that button, the legs drop down. So if you need to adjust the legs, uh, easy enough to do. The other part of the equation, of course, is to have a laptop computer because it needs to drive the data projector. And on most laptop computers, if you look around, and sometimes they're on the side, sometimes they're on the back, sometimes they're on the other side, it just depends on the model of the computer you've got, but I'm sure you'll get to know the one you use most often. It also has this plug here, which is the VGA output. So the signal comes out of this plug, down the cable, and into the data projector. If you can see on here, if I can just hold it up in front of the camera, you can see that this plug goes onto it just like so. It just plugs on. And that's where the signal comes out. Again, you don't really need to tighten up these little screws. Uh, some laptops, like this one for example, doesn't even have any screw holes so it can't tighten up. So it's perfectly fine just to pop the connection on and leave it. You don't have to screw it in. So, we figured out about the projector. This one's been plugged into the power. You can see it's VGA cable here, and if you follow it, it goes all the way through to the computer. So VGA cable on the projector to VGA output on the computer, and that's pretty much it as far as connections. There's really nothing else you need to do. This one here, you can see when I plug it in, it gets a red light on it. 
and that's a power button. If you just press that button to turn it on, you can see it's gone to a green light. And if I just put that gently down again and give that a few minutes to warm up, it will start to output a picture from the lens here onto the screen as it's starting to do now. Now here's the bit that sometimes confuses people because you plug it in, there's an image on the computer screen but there's still nothing showing up on the board. Why? The reason is a laptop computer has actually two possible places it can output the image. One is obviously the screen and the other is the projector. By default it only outputs to the screen. If you want it to output to the projector as well you have to tell it to send a signal out and one of the reasons it does that is to save battery life but that's why it doesn't happen automatically. The way it works, there's a, there's a toggle switch on the keyboard and when you press the toggle switch once, it toggles between three options. One is outputting only to the screen on the computer, the second option is to output to the board and the third option is to output to both. So you see it on the screen and you see it on the board. That's obviously the one you want most of the time. Again, here's the problem, it varies from computer to computer. So on most computers, the keystroke you use is function F7. On some computers it's function F5, on some computers it's function F4, and I wish I could tell you the magic formula for which it is, but if you look at the key on the keyboard, it's actually labelled with a little picture of a screen. Okay? On this computer it's function F7, so you hold down the function key, the one labelled Fn, and you press on this computer F7. And when you do that and let it go, it sometimes takes a moment just to register, but you will see that this screen's now come up, and the screen in the background's now come up. And we're now getting the image on both screens. Okay? That's the single biggest thing that confuses people is when they plug it in and they get nothing on the screen. That's the reason. You have to do the function F whatever to toggle through those three options until you get the one you want, which is obviously outputting to both screens. Now that the system's all working and we've got an image going up to the board, which is what we want, there's a couple of other little things that might be handy to know. One is obviously you can focus it. So on the front of most computers you'll find a focus ring and most data projectors now have two of these rings one controls zoom and as I move that one back and forward you might be able to see the image in the background there is getting bigger and smaller so I can zoom back in, in and out to make it bigger or smaller and the other ring is focus and that controls how blurry or how sharp the image is okay so you can use these two rings just to control uh, depending on how far away from the board you are to shut the machine down when you get to the end of your session and you've shown everything you need to show, there is a power button on the top, you press the power button, I've got a message on the screen up here that says do you want to put the power off, yes, press the button again and press the button again. And most of them work that way, one press just brings up a message saying do you want to shut down, the second press actually confirms it. Okay, But just look at the screen, it'll tell you what to do. And that's it. Uh, this machine's now currently cooling down. When you use these things, the bulbs get really hot and if you bump them while they're hot, they're more likely to break. So it's uh, ideal if you let the machine just cool down for a while first. You can hear it revving. You might be able to hear that fan going. When the thing's cooled down to the stage where it's safe to actually unplug and get rid of the power, the fan actually stops. Okay? Please don't unplug the power before you hear that fan stop because the fan's actually cooling the whole system down now and protecting the bulb. The bulbs are really expensive, so uh, it's uh, a good idea to let them cool down. So there you go, that's all you need to know to set up a data projector, to project it. There really isn't much more to it than that. You get the computer, you get the data projector, you plug them in, you connect them together, and you're good to go. All you've got to remember is that function and the F key, normally F7, sometimes F5, sometimes F4, um, to make sure that you get the image on both screens, to make sure that when you're looking up there on the board, you see what you can see.